Hello and welcome. My name is Radha and today we have a very special guest. Chiraya Dharma is joining us. She is a speaker, author, manifesting mentor, spiritual wisdom guide, and brand coach who brings levity to help us enlighten up. And I think we could all use that. So welcome, Chiraya. Thank you so much, Rada. It's always such a pleasure to get to spend this quality time with you. <laughs> it is. Big hugs. Big yeah. hugs. So today we're going to be talking about the mechanics of karma. Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I like to say that, you know, comprehension is 50% of the work because life, let's just face it, has been a little confusing for most of us on the spiritual level and on even just comprehending why did this happen? Why me? What the heck is going on? <laughs> because we encounter looping patterns and we see things showing up eventually on the path. We start noticing, why do I keep attracting the same kind of man or woman in my life? Or, or, or why does this kind of keep recurring as a theme? And, and so these looping patterns are there for a reason that is somewhat elusive, but it's because of what we call imprints in the subconscious mind. Now, if you go back to the Vedic teachings, you're going to no notice that those are called samskaras. So samskaric residue is basically imprints from previous experience that cause the brain to fire in a certain way. And the more we go into comprehending who we are, what we are, where we are, what the heck is going on, we start realizing that we're this device, this body, mind, spirit complex is almost like a virtual reality device itself. So when people say they're trying to go into virtual reality, I'm like, no, 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 hold up, wait, time out. Don't you guys get it? Like we are, it's like, don't you know what this is? This is <laughs> right here. It's all right here, right now. All the data is here. We just have to learn how to maybe work with it. Do you, so do you think like when we're, when we are born, we are kind of loaded, we're locked and loaded with that samskara or that data from past incarnations, but it seems like it doesn't, they say like some scars ripen. Could you explain that term? Okay. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, some scar, I call it some scar residue. Uh -huh. And um, it ripens because of what we call compounded momentum in the nature of the law. So when when I've brought these books forth and things, that's how source energy speaks it to me and through me. It's compounded momentum in the nature of the law. That is karmic repercussion. And that's why it, it keeps, what was the word you used? Ripening. Um, yeah, some scar. And, and another that. meaning of ripening could be it, Say it again. Oh, go ahead. I just heard that term like, yeah, some scar ripening. Like it's it, it's yeah. ripened for better or for worse. <laughs> sometimes Correct. it's positive and sometimes it's negative. For you writing the books, obviously that's the positive aspect of your some scar. Like all the work you've done in all your incarnations, it's ripening and it's ready to, it's like online now. If we're talking about that video game, virtual reality, like that information, that data is now yeah. downloaded and ready for usage, for positive usage. But the same can go for negative. Can you touch on that? Yes, absolutely. And I want to just t say one more thing about what you just said too. The ripening is, is as if, you know, when a fruit on a tree becomes ripe, you pluck it. So it's like the full manifestation capacity of a given samskara or a given karmic uh, occurrence and the word karma just for clarity means action it's talking about when we okay so let's just back it up when we think a thought we feel a feeling or if we feel a feeling it often causes us to think a thought and then the thoughts and the feelings are the creative energy moving through us and the, and the material that we imprint that thought and feeling with whether it's so-called positive or so-called negative is neutrally imprinting the field of our consciousness and therefore going to bear fruit of its own kind in its own time and so so that's the ripening and and because what happens when you have a thought and a feeling and you stick with it then you naturally are going to take an action in concordance with that mm -hmm. and so then 
as you take actions in accordance with that, then you think more thoughts and feel more feelings that match it. And then it builds and builds and compounds until you've got a thing, a belief system, a pattern, a series of repercussions. And if you get into reacting, so if you're reacting to it because you forgot how the compounded momentum in the nature of the law works, now you're adding more energy into it instead of less. Right. And you're making this the, the stew bigger. You know, you're you're expanding it. That's like it's that's the hardest thing. Like when the triggers, when like something has happened, it feels like, you know, in past life and then it happens again, but it was maybe traumatic or something brings up that energy or momentum that reminds you of that it can be so triggering and I, and I don't care how much meditation you do. It's still, we're still human, you know, we're not perfect. And so um, what are, you know, what would be like a practice like, so that we don't get, you know, so that when someone's ex- re-experiencing an old, some scara that's ripening and maybe it was a negative one mm-hmm. and they don't, instead of repeating, cause I think sometimes the lesson probably comes so that we can, master it this time right <laughs> yes yeah we have the opportunity to do so but mm-hmm. that's what they say like when people work with the great masters like buddha and the ancient vedas or any of the modern teachings that are coming through that are in that help us understand the mechanics of these things you're basically talking about the nervous system and how it fires and and those triggers are in the nervous system. It's a you know a plus and a minus, the positive and negative charge. There's an imbalance of electrical charge. And so what the universe is attempting to do is create a scenario where you can finally collapse the charge, but you can only collapse the charge if you're aware enough to realize that this is not personal. This is not um, on purpose against you. Or that person is not against you. It is coming because of the fruits of past actions, feelings, and thoughts, either in our past lives, early childhood, um, ancestral lineage, and or cultural conditioning in our, in our nervous system processor. So that's the technique then, one of the techniques is to, A, you know, you're becoming an aware in the moment. You're like, oh my God, I'm charged right now. <laughs> so the first step always is just to be like, <laughs> I'm a little reactive to this thing. <laughs> yes, I am. And you can start tapping if you want. <laughs> you know, catching ourselves and just acknowledging it instead of just, you know, throwing the hot potato out at the other person. It's <laughs> like a game because I have turned the hot potato off many times <laughs> before. But I, I have, I have, a, yeah, tapping on the thymus like really helps. Like, yeah. Just taking a deep breath, just clearing that out, like sort of resetting the body quickly, because um, if you don't, it can go back into those old patternings and get re- go right back into that karmic loop again. Correct. It will just keep feeding it until we collapse it. And to collapse it, we have to be self-aware enough and humble enough to be like, okay, this is not only about the other person. I have something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not only about the situation in the world doing things to me. Somehow, yeah. some way, I've got something to do with it. Even if I'm completely innocent and it's some past life I don't remember, it's from my ancestors in my DNA or my body. My <laughs> early childhood, I have no idea what my parents were doing. You know, <laughs> or the culture imprinted me with all this crazy news and you know lies and propaganda or whatever. <laughs> it's got me all triggered. So we got to be loving. The divine mother says, "Be loving to yourself." Like here's your shield of innocence. You're innocent here. You know, but Divine Father said, here's your sword because point it to the truth, which is it's got something to do with you and you're the only one who can clean it. Like, you, right. it's not the person isn't not doing what they're doing. The person's doing what they're doing. <laughs> they're triggering you, yeah. That's true. But how did it happen? Why is it happening? Why are you so charged? It's because there is a dynamic in you that wants to be cleared. Uh, and- I think I found that to be so so powerful and so true the when I've been the most triggered and I step back and I go what's um what do I need to learn here where does this live inside me or the belief or the energy or the whatever the patterning and and like being your own private Mm -hmm. detective or having a highly you know skilled healer like you know Charaya is really helpful because then you can trace back 
and um, do timeline, like kind of trace back timelines and see where the root in, root inception, because I always think of it like a root, like the roots grew in this life and past lifetime and they're they're growing over and into another lifetime. So we you have to pull it out by the root or, or you know, kind of getting those core core level you want to go as deep as you can go otherwise you're just going to end up repeating it over and over and who wants that guys <laughs> exactly. that's exactly right and I think a lot of us you know have been trained in various modalities or we've gotten the direct download that you go to the root core cause and all we have to do once we see the root core cause we just say source creator god love whatever you call whatever your name for god is just call god <laughs> <laughs> you please go to the root core cause of this analyze result and heal it everywhere in all time spaces dimensions all concepts of time all levels all layers yeah in depth and permanently please now thank you god and you know sometimes that command is enough but we wait and pause and feel the energy make sure it feels like something's moving and then we know oh my gosh something just shifted now sometimes more information is needed a sometimes not always you ne there needs to be a memory surface from the past life the early childhood or the ancestral lineage or the cultural conditioning to actually do something cognitively that helps the person absolutely let go of it but yeah. sometimes you can just clear it so it's like by all means just try clearing it and if, yeah. if you try clearing it on your own or with a healer and you can't get to the bottom of it then you can go to a more advanced practice or a more advanced practitioner to really get get into the records and look at exactly where the causes were for that old pattern i think it's really brilliant i think that um I think it's really beneficial. A lot of people say, don't look to the past, it's already done. But I found as a as a private detective of uh, of a car, you know, like a karmic patterning that basically that's where all the, where you find out what's going on so that you can start to balance this timeline. Because yes. sometimes it's just like, it, you know, explosive imbalance in another lifetime. I think many listeners right now probably re relate to, uh, some to Atlantis, the fall of Atlantis, that that um, karmic memory was really harrowing and it lives in, it like kind of lives inside of us if we don't clear it. And it can create this um, like trauma response to certain things. Like I feel that way sometimes about technology. I'm like, oh, like I feel like a trauma response and I have to be like okay this is like I I feel freaked out sometimes because I'm like this is what led to you know the fall of Atlantis or whatnot what I also had like a trigger when I used to see waves I lived by the, right on the ocean and sometimes the waves would go back all the way and it would be silent and I would like almost get panic attacks because oh. I felt like I almost had that like reoccurring feeling that memory of it of it pulling back and then and then coming over all of us and that feeling it, it's like there's no real reason for that there was no I had never had any issues with water but that's a real issue so we have these patternings that can be so deep and so charged and um yeah the program can you tell us about like the programs um you know run people's life like the mm -hmm mind pattern loops that keep going yeah and i've had the the dreams of the water coming with atlantis too so i i do remember that we're going to have a whole atlantis conference coming up this year with the uh, portal to ascension so we'll do more <laughs> clearing on that basically and i have an atlantean wealth matrix clearing download that I, that I should put up for people maybe i'll go ahead and put that up in my free stuff please i will <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So these, these old things that you're researching and these patterns become programs that then are the operating system for a person's thinking, feeling, and acting, mm -hmm. but we're usually subconscious or unconscious of that. Mm -hmm. And, and that means that it's running us rather than us putting, installing software we want to run. It's kind of running amok with us and we don't have the reins because mm -hmm as as co-creators in the in the omniverse uh and extensions of the prime creator in form the light love of our body mind spirit complex who we are and what we're meant to do here we do have the reins we we have the capacity to have the reins but in our forgetfulness and in our fall mm -hmm. like in the fall of atlantis and in fall of these other things 
we forgot and we lost hold of the reins and then we thought we were victims to all this but there was a lot of perpetration that went on hand in hand with that so it's not like there wasn't a situation <laughs> clearly there is a situation <laughs> but you know who's gonna fix it we've got to do the work inside of us to get the hands our hands back on the reins <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's wow. I, I think that's so important to yeah. Remember, we are in the driver's seat, but that's why there. It's important to have the tools and understanding that how it's created. I think, um, you know, from a shamanic shaman's perspective, um, you know, when our soul is sick because of these fractures, you know, um, the remedy is not usually like something that's going to numb you more. The remedy is to get to the, to get into the soul, the root, the core memory, whatever, and to, to start extracting that. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you a question, you know, like through the life and death process, and we've been on this wheel of karma, it just seems to keep going and going and going and going and going, but, but it, it's unbelievable how many, karmic memories or karmic um issues you know so many like we all have this whole world right so why it's like I always wondered like why didn't we get like a clear reset you know what I mean it, we did reset but then as we get older it's actually like the samskara ripens and we get more it's almost like hey when we were young we didn't have those karmic issues but then as we get older they seem to become more prevalent um they ripen they activate whatever you want to call it um they get downloaded into our sphere of consciousness so there's a lot to say about that on many levels and of course it's kind of like a case-by-case -case basis yeah. ultimately um but so some karmas could be associated with a certain age so in another lifetime or in your ancestors or your relatives, something happens at a certain age and then it happens again to you, even if you're the child or the descendant of someone. And it's sort of a trigger of time. And, and so some of them trigger and get activated because of location, because mm -hmm. of age, because of encountering a certain individual or group and, so they they may there may be reasons why certain things get activated and also maybe you're just getting warmed up and you're <laughs> bringing you to it's like okay she can handle this one now so now bring in this set of triggers because she's a big enough girl to pull up her boots and <laughs> ride yeah. that pony here <laughs> <laughs> yay congratulations you've made it to the next level of the video game <laughs> i literally remember oh my gosh i remember when I was in LA, I'm sorry for the noise in the background. I hope you can't hear it too badly. Okay, good. Um, I remember being in the elevator after a, an excruciatingly karmic day as a producer and with some celebrities who shall not be named. <laughs> and I was riding up the elevator and I was just like, I was like, oh my God. And the voice said, there will be four or five more like this. And I'm like, <laughs> would we negotiate? How about three? <laughs> in other words i was being shown here as the blower comes by my front door <laughs> exactly. i was being shown that yeah you're in a progression you're being held through this it's gotta happen so just go with it and sure enough there were four yeah. or five more but once we get a handle on it it's like we take it less and less personally yeah. it's not that it's here i'll let you talk now because this guy's okay. right here at my door yeah it's not like it's happening it's it's not it's not happening to you. It's happening for you to kind of work through those energy, you know, work, work through it and then clear that up. And then, so you can get to the next level of exciting karma <laughs> to work through. But I think for many people, this um, lifetime is a huge acceleration of um, a culmination of many lifetimes. And so what, you know, what I've seen is like the, there's a collapsing of many other timelines around us. From other lifetimes and we're supposed to either extract the lesson or the gift you know because there's both and um so that we can be more centralized into this now moment um because all realities seem to be happening in one simultaneous symphony of the divine 
right? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes, absolutely. It was breaking up a little. So um, when you were speaking just now, just to let you know, oh, sure, sure. So I think you were basically saying this, the symphony of the divine is orchestrating an experience. And what was it? What was the exact question? Uh, so so um, that I've noticed that there are collapsing of many timelines yeah. that we are living on an, uh, like this now version of us, we are living on an accelerated version of this momentum of this version of us mm -hmm. and that are many other versions which are simultaneously existing many of them are collapsing out of our right the collapsing of the timelines yeah and, and so in other words as we sort of get a whiff of what's actually going on and the mechanics of it which is what we're talking about here today yeah. the mechanics of karma we start to get figure out how this thing works called consciousness and our nervous system and our body mind spirit complex then then we can be proactive when we start noticing okay here comes a trigger again you know thank you god instead of like just being all fight we start part of what happens is we start being hum humble <laughs> humble, or, why? humble like, why instead of being humiliated now we're, we have humility so mm -hmm. before when our ego was still in full drive you know <laughs> steering the whole show we were very reactive and resistance against the idea that we might have anything to do with this horrible feeling that happens when we get triggered and and as we go though we start realizing wow if i actually work with this myself in my own nervous system and take responsibility for it i actually feel better and the situation can change and things that were going to go completely south now go upward because i caught myself before i went into a full-blown reaction and did not damage that relationship or whatever it is <laughs> that was going to happen and, and so that literally, you're literally are making it a choice point that takes you on a new trajectory at that moment. So as we go and we keep making these choice points at these different junctures, all of a sudden we're in what you're calling like a completely different timeline. We're in a completely different reality because if we had chosen to go the old, old way and to react and to fight back and to punch yeah. the other person out or whatever <laughs> energetically you know it's not that we don't sometimes have to set boundaries and make decisions away from certain conditions scenarios and relationships we do sometimes we literally have to cause an end to a certain relationship because sometimes the old pattern with that individual has outgrown our ability to tolerate it yeah. you know on level and that person maybe is not changing but we're changing so we have to make a shift it's okay it's not really even a judgment call it's just or sometimes like there there might be a codependent relationship and you just can't be with that soul anymore right now it's like you're you're changing an age-old age-long pattern and the way to do that is to not play that dynamic anymore mm -hmm. and and we sort of test ourselves it's not like we're being tested by outer beings mm -hmm. like did I, did I correct that pattern? Am I still being codependent or yeah. have I got over it? We, you know, we sort of start playing in the field of self-reflect to self-correct. I like to call I it. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. We self-reflect self to self-correct. And that might even be the title of the next book. Who knows? <laughs> Love that. It's um, really important to know that that's how the universe is designed. It's designed for us to self-reflect to self-correct. Exactly. I think that's it's so important. And I think, yeah, the, it's a great trajectory when you have um, these deeper understandings. That's why, you know, spirituality, understanding, healing, karma, it's all very helpful if you really want to make those corrections. Um, I'd love to know about like what, in, you know, ancient mystics say about, you know, what will help clear this up a certain situation? What are, what are, what do they say? Well, what I'm thinking of immediately now i'm getting crown chakra tingles as i think it is the yamas and the niyamas in in buddhism and in in the vedas um basically there's they're similar to the codes like um the ten commandments or things like that like the the this the scriptural references have to do with learning how to engage in the world in a loving and kind way and sort of overcome egoic tendencies to live uprightly or they call it ruta you know, the right way, righteous, right correctness. So in other words, like a lot of that stuff became overlaid with religious dogma over time. But when you go back to the original intent of the scripture, it's like, oh, 
how was I acting in a way that was causing negative repercussions? And how can I act in a way that causes positive repercussions for myself and everyone else? Lo and behold, come to find out we're all one wearing mm-hmm. different, you know, masks. Yeah. Well, well yeah. <laughs> and so what I do to you, I do to me. And, and, you know, the more we get a hold of that, it's the golden rule mm-hmm. too. It's like this is embedded in all the ancient scriptures, and it has to do with with living in a way that harmonizes with one another, with life, with nature, and with the universe and with the planet. And so it's almost like in the yugas, like the we we start at Satya Yuga, they say, and then we go down to Dwapara and Treta Yuga. I can't remember which one comes first. Then we go all the way down into Kali, where basically in Satya Yuga, it's like the golden age and everything is pristine. Oh, we know exactly what to do and say. We live in bliss and harmony and dancing. <laughs> we're, we're on the upswing. We're on the upswing. <laughs> but then we, as we go down, we, our ego gets bigger and our spiritual memory gets smaller until it's just chaos in Kali Yuga. It's like, you know, wars and fighting and all kinds of crazy stuff going on to where we're like, holy crap, we need to fix this. So we start asking again. We start seeking for the old wisdom codes. We find, we, you know, our, it dawns on us. It's like, maybe there's a better way. And <laughs> we start looking and we start correcting and we start doing that. And then it, we build back up to the golden age again, which many obviously have said, you know, we're heading into a thousand years of peace or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I've often wondered why only a thousand years? Well, oh, it's cyclic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's a cycle here in this video game, in this merry go yeah. that we're on, you know, which is why some people are like, how do I get off this thing? Yeah. Like, Where's the exit door? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which has to do with becoming non-reactive that's why buddha and the others taught become non-reactive to what is because what is is an ever-flowing ebb and flow of phenomena called in in prakriti which is nature which is this this field of this holographic video game that we're in it will never always stay the same it will never fully satisfy us. The only thing that's ever going to fully satisfy us is remembering who we are and being at one with the love and bliss that we already are. And we never stopped being. We just pretended and we believed our game so much that we absolutely forgot the reality of how beautiful and blissful and peaceful we actually are and mm-hmm. how everything is behind this reality show. <laughs> that we're in. Go back the curtain. That's so beautiful. I think... Um... Yeah, I think people are getting sick of it, you know, I think and that sometimes you have to hit the wall so you can start to humble and and start to ask deeper questions. And I know for every dark night of the soul I've been through and every time I thought, I don't think I could get through this. When I went through the other side, it was much lighter and brighter. And that and that and, and we have those many times in our lives, like a dark night of the soul isn't something that's just going to happen once when we're working through heavy karmic densities that we're purging through or maybe from our lineage or or society or whatnot um they you know we have to give ourselves some a little bit of like credit and also give ourselves the ability that it's okay because i think we we are trained at some programming level that life was meant to be so perfect all the time and there is that truth everything's a relative truth so that's a relative truth we're getting we're sort of working through that and towards that um as we're moving into the golden age but in the meantime we all have to purge a lot and clear these karmic dynamics so that we can lighten our load i'm just really grateful this conversation is so enlightening and i do want to circle back and do a part two of this so thank you so much for coming on today and any last words of wisdom yes i want to touch on something that you were just pointing to and that is that coming into the earth plane into a certain lineage is actually an act of service Mm -hmm. Because as you, and it even brings like almost tears to my eyes, thinking about all the people who, all the volunteers who have come here in service to help do just what you're talking about, to clean the ley lines, to clean the ancestral lineages, to clean the muck and the mess from the chaos of the, you know, the fall 
that we experienced here. And, and as each person be willing to face it and heal it and love themselves through it, and it is truly a self-correct to self-reflect, nobody else can do it for you. You can drag a horse to water. You can't make them drink. You're not supposed to. They have to want it. They have to do it themselves with help sometimes, but they need to first have an asking for the help. And we each need to have an asking. We, we have to wave the white flag. Enough already, God, show me. What do I need to do? Yeah. I <laughs> have to do for God's sake. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. When we get to that point, then the universe is like, oh, she's ready. Okay, good. Here, this is what you have to do. <laughs> and then the book will fall off the shelf. Well, you'll watch this video or you'll, or you'll meet somebody at a, an event that will point you in the right way. Because it, it's up to you, it's free will to grow to, or not to grow. That is the question. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you so much for these sweet gems. They are, it's very helpful. I think, um, you know, everyone's going through their process. So I know that this will help bring more light as you are here to lighten it up. Thank you all so much for joining. And until next time, much love and blessings. Bye for now. Bye.